Right. Uh, Merry Christmas 2020. It's the Boxing Day. It's Boxing Day. It's the 26th of December 2020. The year of horror that it has been, but also a year of plenty of time to think, I think, for everyone. I myself have been um, furloughed since like the end of March, essentially, and it's, it's obviously Christmas now. Looks like we're not getting much back to normal until April as far as the UK is concerned so plenty of time to do some more digging and I thought whilst having a look at everything on the internet throughout the last load of months there is a distinct lack of local history that I've been quite interested in uh, during this time so like I live close to Brookvale Park in Erdington Birmingham um, so I've been using it quite a lot I did get a dog a little greyhound halfway through the lockdown too and uh that's introduced me to the area a lot more. I've lived here all my life for like 28 years, but I uh, never really looked around because as far as I was concerned, the parks in the area, just full of chavs and bastards essentially, and I wouldn't go there. But like uh, obviously growing up and the big people aren't as scary as they used to be um, in the real world, I guess. So uh, we're just gonna have a look at what Brookvale Park was about before, what it's about now, um, why it's there in the first place and try and link together some of the really old history because it's only about 100 years to technically get through maybe 150 if you include the founding of the reservoirs themselves but I found the whole thing really interesting and no one's really pulled all of this together on the internet yet as far as I can find there's a Birmingham history forum and I'm going to say now if I have taken any photos that are copyrighted to yourself if you spot any please let me know and I can either remove them or at least give me permission to carry on because hopefully the message in this video is fruitful enough that makes you think uh, we may as well stick with the photos we've got because it's really nice to have them all pulled together. Um, if I am if I can, I'll try and pull together at least all the, uh, the sources where all these photos came from so you can go and thank the people yourself if they're still alive, which I doubt because most of these photos are from 1911 and backwards apart from all the new ones which I've taken myself or I'm using Google Earth which I assume is free to use for anyone because it's Google Earth and they've got photos of us in this little globe so uh, let's bring up the globe let's start there so I've got Google Earth ready to go on this lovely globular representation of where we live so let's boop alright so let's head to Brookvale here's a Planet Earth, it's where I'm broadcasting from apparently. Uh, Brookvale Park, here we go. First of all, I thought just because Google like, offers up the opportunity, it may as well be worth flicking through the highlight reel because I find it quite funny. Sometimes what you end up getting, because I don't think Google vets it too much. All right, there's Brookvale Park in all of its splendour and glory. Aston Park over there. You've got um, some Gate Junction, just there. Can you tell? Uh, many roundabout surroundings. Very industrial around here. Really used to be mostly fields, just like everywhere else. Turns out we are very high up compared to most places. Almost on a plateau. Looking at it, which explains all of the reservoirs being so high up and then feeding everyone below how water works. So there's all your reservoirs, not the only ones in the area. We've got this one that doesn't get used anymore, I believe that's behind Featherstone on Reservoir Road, which is a big hill, massive hill. You just can't tell on Google Earth about the topography of the area, but essentially this whole middle section is a big bloody hill, as far as I can tell. Because if you think the Brookvale here is down Marsh Hill, big hill, coming all the way down, so here's top of the hill, down a big hill into like almost a, not a ravine, but uh, definitely in between two hills, is that a ravine? Into a trough? And then you're going back up this hill here. And if you stand here, you're actually as high as the gantries of the M6, which is raised, what, 40 foot from the ground anyway, and is above everything, including the rather large um, graveyard here, which is nice. Don't think it's used too much anymore. It's lovely for a walk, so even in the lockdown you can just go in, go and have a look. Uh, there's a lot of history to be looked at there. Um, so this isn't, I've not been to uni, I'm not a historian, this is literally my account as an Erlington resident, with the help of the internet, pulling together all of the information that I possibly can do about the area that I keep walking around every day with my dog and not really questioning what's around us, which uh, 
really I think we've hit a point in time where they've taken all the nice stuff away from us and we don't even remember or know for some reason it looks like no one fought for it at the time um, it's a big shame I'm not this is not a video poo-pooing how it is now it's a very nice area all in um, we are lucky to have places to walk around and still be around trees and grass in the middle of a city um, Luckily, in this area, all the leases seem to be about a thousand years, so there's not going to be too much change in the area as to what's happened now. The remaining ground around us looks like either unusable, um, maybe too wet, or the wrong type of uh, foundation to build on, so hopefully that's all the change for a while. Although, when I mean, you can see here how the water all links up here, Brook failed is here, and it just links up here under the road, over here to Whitton Lakes where it peels out just up here and then splits two ways as you can see all covered up now but before as you'll see all, all exposed so you could go to the river and maybe fish or drink or something maybe a uh, bit of a so it's covered here and it splits down here it'll cross over here to Streetly Road under the road looks a bit into Bleak Hill Park another massive hill this you'll see it in the background of the old photos when the Bleak Hills were literally there's nothing on there, it's bleak. And now it's uh, it's still bleak, but there are people there. Um, there's a little nice new path which goes all the way through. There's the old reservoir there on your left. It's really hard to make sense of your surroundings when it's all roads and houses. You can't tell where you are, but essentially, hopefully you start to understand how the land is laid out at this point. And then the water goes, just stops here, goes underground in the middle of the wreck, the recreational park. Also the wreck. This bit here is actually, it's just been cleared to be built on, I believe. It looks like it's been here about the whole time because it's a completely separate area. Um, my missus, she remembers planting possibly these trees as part of like a primary school project years ago. Um, it's going to be a shame to see it go, but at the same time, the park areas have been on and off as far as how they've been used, whether it's for antisocial behaviour or for actual people who want to enjoy the outdoors as intended. Um, I personally believe things have calmed down a lot as to how they were in the kind of early 2000s and onwards and a lot of scramblers and all no even the scramblers aren't a problem upon reflection um, they're just using the park for like the only space you can use a scrambler and obviously these days the legalities around scramblers and electric scooters that used to be a pain in the arse to everyone they seem to have disappeared because now the government can just give you an electric scooter in town and you can dump it wherever you want and you don't need a license and blah 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 so we won't complain too much the world's changed um, oh you can kind of see the the hillscape here there's not many options on Google Earth to keep you you can put the grid lines on but it looks rubbish and you can't see what you're doing so not gonna do that anyway let's crack on and wasting time now and we're gonna get to some history so we're gonna dive straight into actually I'll give you a quick run of the route from this end of the lake so Whitton Lakes here, running in, through here, little walkway, into the middle pool, so upper pool, middle Witten pool, and lower Witten pool at the time, and now it's Brookvale Park. Um, through the there, so water in, through there, roll around, comes down here, big ramp, filter systems, an old well here somewhere, defunct now and covered up, you can't, can't get into it. So here's where it comes down, all the way down here, down this little channel, through here, little bridge, giant trees, just here we'll get to that. Then it just runs next to this path all the way down. I believe it's Gypsy Lane here, which we'll see in the pictures in a moment. Up to Marsh Hill, water's still here and it runs under the road. Pops up here, runs down here, back under the road. Stays under and then pops up again, just here. Then runs in. This is where you'll see the pictures in the history of all the bridges and the nice woodwork and all the kids playing and having a lovely time. Uh, the old house here, I don't think it's a park keeper's house, but could be, I'm not too sure. Uh, reportedly there was a swimming pool in this area too before. I imagine this was nothing. This is all fairly just a new office build, which is now derelict and guarded, even though there's nothing going on. Old Georgian Edwardian houses down here. Victorian potential and then yeah just onwards here's uh, this whole estate over here is Brookvale Limited it's a 
built in the 80s really all new so this was all grass and there was nothing there before who knows uh, so then we get to Brookvale just here so it runs through into Brookvale Lake inlets and inlets coming from all sides here I imagine it buggers off from here and carries on but who knows don't know too much I'm still trying to learn is actually as well even if you carry on you've got this whole area by Spaghetti Junction and if you do do a walk round here there's a few foundations and walls all under the trees and under the hedges and just buried uh, not too sure I can't figure out what these buildings were there's nothing in history saying there was something there I can only assume changing rooms for football or something if this was a recreational area but I really don't know and the ground's terrible and the soil's terrible it's all basically just cast off from the built the train track I imagine and just threw all the dirt down there I don't know but it's uh yeah it's just trash land there's nothing going on there but eventually that will turn into housing um, it's all starting up again all the building around here anyway there seems to be a few projects popping up right so that's hopefully a brief Google Earth tour out of the way and you're not bored and you know what the crack's going to be if you are still here and I hope you enjoy it because some of these photos are great I'm sorry if I'm taking my sweet time to get there but it's Boxing Day and I've got nothing to do um, so here we go Hope you've all had a lovely Christmas. Da, 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 da. Right, that's enough Google Earth. Let's get to the presentation. Here we go. Am I in the way? I'm in the way. Let's move me up a little bit. Out there? I'll do. Right. Back in here. So, a quick history of Brookvale Park and Whitton Lakes. It's not really a history, it's more of a diving in, being speculative, having a look at what we used to have compared to what we have now and then getting a bit sad about how it's all been ruined essentially but also we are lucky to be living in the area a tiny history here 1826 the Waterworks Company forms the water supply to the inhabitants of Birmingham on the 20th of July 1856 the Waterworks Company acquires Brookvale, the Brookvale site from the Wiley Birch for £3,600 a lot of money then and then the site known as Lower Witten Reservoir. Birmingham Corporation bought the Waterworks Company in 1876, 20 years in. In 1894, Erdington becomes an Urban District Council and nine years later, the Urban District Council purchases Rookery House as council offices and the land of the site became Erdington's first park. I believe that's the other side down Bromford Lane. We're not going to look at that park today. Erdington Park, I think they call that one. Um, and on the 7th of October 1909, Brookvale Park officially opens until 1926. Brookvale Park Lake was used as an open air swimming pool operated by the Birmingham Baths Committee. Alright, oh, so that didn't last long. 17 years of it being a swimming pool, we've got a picture of that. The lakes and the surrounding parkland are now maintained as a leisure amenity by Birmingham City Council. Uh, the Sons of Rest building in the park was destroyed by fire in October 2013. Awesome. Another very empty history. Always 1086, of course, you're in a doomsday book, you'll be mentioned. Boom. Um, Erdington falls within the boundary of the Royal Sutton Forest within the larger area of Eston, Aston. And this was given to William Fitz Ansculf, who in turn gave the area to Thomas de Erdington. That's where we get our town names from, you know. There's always a guy whose last name is a town name. It's just a play of words in the end. Luckily, because it's nice and easy to explain. John de Brookvale coming up in a minute. 1126, Henry I exchanges the manor of Sutton and two forests in Rutland, and Sutton becomes a chase as only royal forests could be called forests. And then Waterworks Company in 1826 formed the water supply to the inhabitants of Birmingham in 56, 30 years on. Uh, the Waterworks acquires the Brookvale estate. And then 1876, Birmingham Corporation moves in. 1894, Erdington becomes an urban district council. 1905, they purchase Rookery House. 1909, the park opens. So did you open the park, nice and ready for winter in 7th of October. But they did a bloody good job the first time round. So a little bit of, we're going to go modern first in my terrible iPhone 6 photos. And then uh, we'll go back to the much better quality photos from 1910. So, um, 
Witten Lakes. This is just like off a dog walk. Sorry, the weather wasn't that nice. But what you going to do? So there's your lake. I'm standing just next to this uh, this bridge where this gentleman is at. Um, so this is where the water comes down, pretty much just drips down here now, it's barely in use when it rains, gets a bit flooded, sends a bit of water down, and there's the ramp, and here it comes down into this channel, which is just overgrown, all this fencing's broken now, there's a lot of rubbish just lying around. Pretty sure my dog cut his foot the other day around this area. There is he, there he is, little pippin. Um, abandoned masonry there, so you can see the ramp coming down, the old channel, boop, boop, water, little turret esque area. I don't know, I guess this was just a nice entrance to look at at the time. So you could probably walk down the other side because it was for the people, you see. Abandoned masonry, good nick. Obviously, you can see it's not really been patched up too much over there this one a little bit new but not as new as the uh, the tunnels down the road which I'll show you so standing the test of time and you can sit on there and enjoy your favorite canned beverage of fermented apple juice with the lads um, they're not left any behind on this day just a couple of maybe a tampon anyway so here's the a uh, bit further down if you walk into Witten Lakes and you look where I said the stream headed back towards Bleak Hill. If you look down the, the little bridge that way, this is your view. All the trees falling over, luckily the right way, so they just leave it hanging. A few trees uh, just before winter coming, just now. Uh, a few trees falling over into the path too. So not a lot of maintenance going on. They're not keeping an eye on these trees too much by the looks of it. You can see more abandoned masonry, old something that was going on here. Much more grandeur than we get to look at today, but still, we like an old ruin, don't we? Uh, this thing blows my mind every time I walk past it. So this is on the path out of Witten Lakes, and these are your four trees, um, which are surrounded on the corners of this substation. Electric box that's giving out electric magnetic frequencies, clearly, and uh, sending these trees haywire and massive. These going straight up, you can see the, the change of vegetation. I imagine it's a bit warmer by this. It's, uh, these trees are absolutely massive compared to the other trees in the area. Check it out, it's very interesting, and there would be the effect of electric magnetic forces on biomatter. Uh, so, watch yourself if you walk past it, I imagine. They're just massive, there you go. I've actually got a little video of a close up of all this, and it's next to the water channel. Um, and when that channel is next to the electric field channel, the trees between seem to go straight up, but I can't see where the roots have been going because there's nowhere for the roots to go because the water channel's there. So, I imagine they're going to fall and cause a bit of a nuisance one day well who knows here's the park not scrubland uh, but we are in the middle of the lockdown so they left a lot of the park unkempt so people won't chill too much together in groups um, so here's the park it's not as bad as it looks here sometimes the sun comes out so once that channel leaves the park and gets to the main road which I'll show you cuts under goes under there newer masonry work there I imagine it was nicer before, it doesn't look very original. Here's some of the older stuff on the other side. Um, yeah, the kind of, I guess this is just a sluice gate and they clear it out and they monitor the water level, I don't know. But I guess it's just a check centre now, there's nothing. Definitely no way you can sit and ponder your life. Maybe end it. Um, and this bit heading into Brookvale Park, so the lower Witten Lake towards Spaghetti Junction, which is where we reside. Um, and here's the lake. I'll show you a photo of how this was before. Again, publicly inaccessible, loaded with old wood that the, the park keepers chopped down, loaded with old needles and JD bags, Nike shoes, and maybe a packet of discos lying about in there. But again, this photo, making it seem much cleaner than it really is. And this is not a video to poo-poo the area. I'm just saying, as you'll see, it's changed. Here's the rest, publicly inaccessible. Um, this bridge refurbed fairly recently, I think near the millennium. Terrible job on that, I'll show you. This all used to be beautiful, is essentially what I'm saying. And there's the old house, which you'll see in the old photos for reference, and the bridge. You'll see this bit. 
you'll see this bit it's a bit of old edge in there which I think correlates to some of the old design going on um, we are a hundred years down the line so some of these trees will still be there and a lot of them should be massive or they've just been cleared out and changed 100 years not too long in a tree's lifetime I imagine but we do get um, this heron there's a couple of herons that live on the little island in the middle of the lake and this guy it's always nice to catch him usually in the morning but there it is right there's that path with the um, exposed old side of the path I guess it was closed down or it used to come out further you can see bits of old things popping up everywhere but nothing that substantial but there's clues there's clues here's the road as it is at the moment the main road so over here is where you exit Whitton Lakes this is where the water runs underneath pops up again over here and then this is it it's crossed the road from this right hand side and approaches under here and then this is where it pops up under all this thicket here uh, publicly inaccessible once again uh, you can't see it until you get to the bridge really but this used to be all open and very usable and very kid friendly fishing paddling everything you want out of your typical British summer and this isn't the best representation of the area because it looks like that Audi is actually giving way correctly so I don't want to push the fake news here but not usually the case here we go a bit open this is the latest thing to really be done to the park and I think this is millennium again this little swan thing here it's like a sleepy swan under his wing with some like it says welcome in various languages and a lot of school kids got involved and engraved things on it and then a lot of the local bastards got involved and engraved their names on it uh, after it was installed but it's there and um, not cleaned as often as it could be again it's just maybe ornamentation isn't what it used to be as you'll see and now the view from George Road I'm assuming you're fairly local and get it I don't really see why you'd be watching a video on Brookvale Park if you're not local but if you aren't local welcome come and visit one day when the world opens up again it's there uh, it is nice when it's sunny here's the entrance uh, I'll zoom in a little bit it's there so you can see yeah the general old entrance to the park here the two toilets I imagine at the time but probably a lot more to them than we think I mean these have been sealed off completely now and there were toilets in the 90s into the early 2000s and then due to reports of people shooting up in there and all the usual they've blocked them off completely and I myself believe there's something more to these towers just purely down to the domage going on and the uh it's kind of like the little aerials and trinkets that hang from it and the uh the little little nice designs which just seem to do like quite dovecoty in comparison to just being a toilet i think you'll see how they looked originally and they were much nicer than what their intended use seems to be these posts are new i've got old pictures of old men in like brass embossed fishing people people on boats just a, a big collection of things you're not allowed to do in the park anymore get out of there all right here's a view going down this is park park road potentially i think it's park road you go down there on the left hand side and here's all the the old recreational area which you'll see uh, there's the bowling green surrounded by prison fencing uh, that's pretty knackered doesn't lock um, the grass isn't flat it's not for bowls um, you can have a little fire there if you're homeless at any point seems to be a safe space for that gonna go that way right uh, a bit further down the road looking in play areas the football pitch basketball court a new addition in the last 10 years or so 15 years little seating area that play area has been there since I was a nipper so I mean 1992 at least um, and nothing's changed they took away this the spring bike which used to be my favorite and the roundabout everything else is still there um, I'm much better at the monkey bars now I can touch the floor and this side so the old like boat ramp where you send your boats down that's just there and the old boat house sailing club house all this unusable now you can't get access to here no one's been using boats here for absolutely years not as a, a council thing anyway or anything run by the 
council you can turn up with your own boat and just get in i don't think anyone's going to tell you any different but it's not supplied and you'll just see here where all the old boats are just in an overgrown garden next to this bloody house which is also in a derelict state which is such a shame because it looked looks like it was nice it is a shame but i guess funding is going to be the uh the crux of the issue here i'm sure we'll get it right a uh, bit more down here oh yeah so this is more of a point just showing you that like the channel of water where i was at the top of the road is all completely overgrown now and this is the bit where you'll see was completely open and really a beautiful place all in so we go back to the old map before all of us urchins moved in and built our horrible structures of housing and corner shops and I think that's all we had about ended up with. It looks like they sold baths and kitchens at one point on the corner. Um, that's it, really. Uh, very new. I mean, Erdington in general and Birmingham, not too important in history as a general thing until the Industrial Revolution. So, pretty much fields 150 years ago. The most of it, the water, providing water for the people. So, like where the streams are, where the brooks are, that's going to tend to be where all the people congregate. Um, classic example if you look at the history of Digbeth and just see how that uh, the River Ray runs out of town and you'll just see how the housing stuck to that river for years and it's only quite recently I mean during the, rev the revolution um, that's when they start moving in they start using the water the canal system and pulling the water where they needed it by the looks of it it all makes sense so hopefully I'm not waffling too much this is Erdington before all of the housing essentially so here's your bleak hills nothing going on there they're just the bleak hills uh, all the land marked out not too many structures in the way so up here is your upper Witten pool in the middle one after the bridge and then the stream that runs down here under the road pops up again into the park all that covered up area now old house not on the map at this point so, but there is, I, I believe because this pump is still there, I've got a photo, but the P here, and the P here, and the W there, so that must be the well, which is blocked up by a big concrete cork, you can't get in. So that was public water at the time. This was a clean water that was drilled from a borehole, I believe the, the term is. So this is like good enough water for the people at the time, and it's drilled from here, and it's a natural spring of such. Uh, not natural, unnatural spring uh, that we created at the time which we just didn't need because we get our water from Wales now for some reason, I don't understand the ins and outs but obviously there's a lot of we need a lot more water than these water could provide once the uh, population gained I imagine is the case but this water, every everywhere you could get this water and drink it I guess it's untreated now but all the pumps, all the wells blocked up defunct, can't use them but the remnants are there um, so it's quite interesting so here's, here's the one which is actually in this thicket bit that I just showed you in the young overgrown area just there you can find the base of an old water pump which is still there somehow obviously all the bits that were nickable have been nicked and weirdly this is just bolted down so I'm amazed it's still there you can see four bolts are, are, are probably what, 16s who knows get down there don't get down there leave it it's the one thing can we just have that can we keep that it's quite nice isn't it something to lean on here's some examples of water pipage from this company Glenfield these are going to be like pretty much original from when the reservoirs were put in place because they were for the water that was the point so here's the pumps to get the water for the people and here are other examples of the public pumps put out by Glenfield quick history here basically it's Glenfield and Kennedy, Glenfield making the castings and the ironworks by the looks of it and Kennedy being the water meter patent makers and the people who want to make the money out of the water so you can thank these people for uh, putting a meter on your water in general and charging you for it as you use it um, 1863 onwards it was all downhill from there um, so that's just more examples of water pumps it looks like all of them lose their bits that can go I had to get a picture of, no I didn't, that's a shame. There's a picture of how one works, the pump pulley system. You'll see actually in town, if you go to Matalan, uh, the James Watt 
steam engine, which is just a massive water pump, essentially, to fill the canals and all that, apparently. Go and have, I will go and, I'll do a video on that. That's just down the road. It all links in. Right, we're finally at the history. If you're still here, thank you very much for staying. Um, hopefully this has made sense so far and will continue to make sense. And I've tried to put this in an order where it's referable and you know where you are. I am assuming you know a bit more than you probably would if it was a new subject to you. But um, all of this should be like, a, oh, I know that area. That's the point, it's that kind of video. I like, I like the new Carl Chin. But I have no chin, should I grow a beard? Mm-hmm. Right. So here's Gypsy Lane. Which is the one that just runs down the side of the park next to that stream, next to the path that runs out of the park. All mud. We build things, but we did not have roads down. Like, tarmac was not a thing at this point. In this area, anyway. You see it's all tram... Not trams, uh, well... The tracks of various... Probably horse-pulled carriages... Uh, maybe motorbikes at this point, push bikes, but not a lot going on in the area by the looks of it. I believe, yeah, Gypsy Lane heading still the same way, so the park would be on your right hand side. Um, there looks like there's a bus stop, we've got buses, we've got electric, we've got telephone wires, we've got standard sized trees before the implementation of sub substations as a uh, fertilizer right so there's a uh, yeah just a lack of road there's something that resembles a pavement there which is quite nice uh, now this is all built up standard kind of 50s housing by the looks of it some of it right there's a little gas lamp light a man doing his bit he's got a long night ahead of him it's a good good job he started now in the daylight he's gonna light all the lamps around Erdington isn't he Right, so Brookvale Park from George Road, where we've just kind of seen. So, if you go up this path on the right, you'd head up towards that corner at George Road and be by those two new pillars that wouldn't be there at the time, and the two toilets that probably aren't there at this point. It looks like this is very new. There's not a lot going on. There is something there, which I don't know if that's the swimming baths. I believe it could be. So, this is very early. There's just not a lot going on at all. This changes rapidly. Um, as you'll see. Again another view, this looks like from the end by the bridge looking towards and across the lake towards this uh, George Road corner over there. Uh, a lot of housing built at this point, all Bleak Hill built up. So quite late on, what we say, 1920, yeah. Uh, all the stuff over here in the Brookvale Limited side, not even a thought in anyone's brain at the moment. We've got another 60 years until that starts to happen. So this is all grass heading over to town to Salford Bridge maybe at this point no I don't think that's there yet yeah to the bridge spaghetti junction not there yet power league not there yet all the industrial bits and the you know the logistic centers of now not there fields and fields and fields all farms essentially boop, 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 boop. swimming baths yeah looks like this is the area if you see just here at the back it looks like they're standing over there yeah I think that makes sense and yeah so you'll see these structures in the background in a moment but here's your swimming baths which means this may line up with an inlet there's still some concrete on this side that you can see where the inlet hole is it maybe it lines up with this so there's going to be some old brickwork from these buildings just lying around in the water still it's very bizarre we don't have this at all now it's gone and you got to question what all these holes are for. I don't know if like radio was a big thing at the time or whether this was a, almost like a Roman Baths-esque idea where you'd be getting some kind of goodness from the atmosphere by the looks of it because I just don't see the point in all of these tiny spires and a beat there being a body of water. Uh, I'm going off tangent here this will be more videos in the future about my thoughts and many other people's thoughts on the power of water and what it does uh, to our psyche and our physical selves and just how probably water is everything and knows everything and water probably a much more important thing than it is made out to be now uh, so if you just think of this park already you've seen we've got the swimming pool not a lot, lot else going on it's very new but this was an important thing to do for the community everyone looking fairly happy 
I don't know, they, they look fed, clothed, clean, and they, they just aren't words that you associate with this area anymore. <laughs> uh, Marsh Hill, so this is just that, is that corner I showed you, uh, with all the new cars crossing and the corner shops. This is the corner, so this would be heading over towards the park, I believe. Is that the mill house? Anyway, you can just see it's still open plan. We have got phone lines by the looks of it. It's 1923. So it's just this middle period where everything tends to make sense at this time. Old, old map. It's, there's a bit of topography involved so you can see the hills. Uh, we'll try and zoom in because we're only here. <clears throat> so there's your two poles, the channel walking down and Brookvale. Nothing over here and all here. Completely empty. Up to Salford Bridge where Spaghetti Junction is now. All fields, lovely little bridge which will then get you into the city centre. Boom. So yeah, Erdington, Shoreheath, everything completely, farmland and the like, essentially. Um, Erdington High Street all over here. Everything following that way. I think the new road, new Sutton Road's been built at this point as a bypass. Looks like it. Anyway, have a little dive. I'll try and throw all the um, descriptions, well, the, the links to these things in the description at some point. So you can go and find all these pictures for yourself or just get in touch and I'll send them over. I'll send you the PowerPoint, you can have a look. All right. Oh, actually, yeah, because of the uh, the shading, you can see the hillage in the area, which I think makes sense. Could say white high, shows low. I don't know if that's lowlands then, and the higher is darker. Not too sure, but you can you can bite, bend your head around it. It's a shame the roads are there and you can't just look at town as a load of hills so you can get your head around it. Just imagine all the trains ploughing through the hills and all the caves that used to be sandstone where Salford Bridge is and just the massive sheer sandstone drops you see on the left-hand side of Tyburn Road. The area looks mad and everything's really high. Uh, Gravity Hill, massively high. Train station, really low. So it's a lot of land moved out the way just for the trains. And then it all lines up with all the, the, the tracks that carry on down Litchfield Road and past um, Fimble Mill Lane and those old bridges. Another mad looking bridge. If you look at it, go and have a look. It's just really hard to get your head around how they built these things or why uh, or how we've adapted them to our uses now by extending that bridge over the dual carriageway. I digress. There's this a lot. I'm going to do this a lot. I'll get better at shutting up. Anyway, um, here's a picture from. It's looking like 1910, 11. Uh, they look. It's going to be a little bit of a photograph, a little bit of an engraving by the looks of it. I can't really tell. Or a terrible photograph, all in. But you can see people happily boating around, fishing, chatting. It's the done thing. Everyone's dressing quite well. For the air, I imagine it was quite fancy to having this around in your local amenities. Um, there's something up here which I'm not sure. That looks like a little statue. Something nice went on there. We're gonna have to have another look. Anyway, and then there's the path that just bends round. I wonder what that is. Hmm. That island's still there. I think it got extended. It's where all the fancy birds live. With beaks, not the, not the women. Um, so here's our toilets, looking quite fancy in the nineteen tens. We've got lamp posts. I don't know if they are gas powered at this point, like the guy lighting one down the road. Uh, it's a long job if he if they are. I don't know how much light they really give up in this area. Again, big lack of road. It's just dust. Pavements look a little bit more solid. Maybe the people were more important than cars at the time. Who can be sure? Um, people, again, I got, it doesn't say what day this is or why it's all vanilla skies, it's sepia toned, it's going to give you that romantic feeling of maybe this looks really nice but who can really know, it's quite gritty and stony as well but everyone in the area and in the photo looking well to do enough. And these houses are massive even for now standards and they sell for like 200 grand, it's ridiculous. So here's um where it all starts to get interesting really and back to my point about spires and design uh, and things that happen to be put by bodies of water like this even if the water is man-made maybe the fact the body of water is made in the first place is something for the people at the time maybe we needed this but they gave them everything look at this you've got the uh, little wooden bridges made this is the fishing area i think 
Um, this is where those play areas are now that I've shown you. That's the bowl in green with the prison fence, just there. George, uh, that's Rosary Road, I believe. George Road, just across the back here. Uh, but you've got this bloody thing. Hexagon, structure. You can go in underneath here, but you can go on top. It's like a, it's almost like a bandstand. And there was a massive boom of bandstands throughout the Victorian period, which um, under the guise of people want to play undercover and enjoy the parks, but I just think there's so many and it was put everywhere. There's none now, they're all gone. But at the time, hundreds around the country, maybe thousands, all made of iron and lovely design work um, and now overlooked. I think an old technology we just don't require or won't be given anymore. Um, again, here's a little sketch, looks like a charcoal boy of the area where the play areas are now so this back bit would be the bowling green now here's your two toilets or whatever they are um they don't even give you toilets at parks now it's crazy uh there's that little pagoda-ish area not, well not pagoda well almost well we'll get to that actually chahatri i think they're called is the design of a dome from taken from india uh again bells very important in the past uh here's a big bell tower here wonder what that was for to signify last swimmers and here's the fancy boys right everyone wears a hat back in the day I don't know what was going on if there was a massive UV thing that they told everyone to protect your heads because it's all going wrong but everyone wears hats in the past it's not even a fashion statement it's everyone everyone wears hats and they've all got crazy sh head shapes for looks because their hats are all different shapes too but thing is as long as you got a hat on you can come to the park and I'll roll an old bylaw that's obviously gone by the by. There's the house, which you saw, I think, in the in the modern photos. Um, there's supposedly a swimming pool here too, I think, behind this sign at the time. Um, yeah, that looks nothing like that. You've got that nice caravan park there now and a fence and loads of rubbish and overgrown hedges and just that water pump that you can't use and all this overgrown you'll see this area all overgrown I think I've already shown you this area all overgrown my uncle was the head park keeper in 1560s he lived in that house and you can just see out the picture is the old swimming pool so there you go that bridge still there I believe it's going to be completely rebuilt and rehashed because it's a terrible out of line job at the moment it looks fairly similar right so here's the end I believe that overgrown thicket bit that I showed you with the Audi that was over, was giving way, this is that area. Or, it's it's bizarre how you're supposed to figure out, it, that's how bad it is, you can't even figure out where this is. This is Erlington Park, and again, 1910, 1911, everyone there, everyone in a hat as always. Got a little paddle on, it's super clean, everyone's there, this looks like an entire school trip in Children's Corner, Brookvale Park. And again, I found this one just as I was about to finish up this slideshow, but this is the last one I found. I am not sure where that bridge is. Even now. If this is the one that's in the middle of the, the roads that's been rehashed and looks terrible, potentially, but I honestly haven't a clue which one that is. Or is it the one by the electric trees? which is, has been redone too. I can't tell if that's like going to Gypsy Lane. Potentially. But again, all the schoolboys out, having a good time, taking his shoes off. We're going paddling. It's just like a much nicer place to be than now, and you wouldn't, you just wouldn't. You definitely wouldn't take your shoes off if you're going in there. Again, so there's a nice bridge heading into it from that covered up thicketed end but you can't even you can't even walk past this this point at the moment it's all posted off and there's just trees everywhere um i don't know where that house is here is this even earlier maybe the house isn't there yet but the house should be around here these nice banks this nice woodwork oh there's the dog how you doing mate uh, yeah, kids everywhere again, always busy by the looks of it, all well-timed photos and these are all posed and this wasn't anything for us but almost a sales book to get people to come to Wellington, who knows? Hello mate. Um, here's the dog, this is Pippin. Hello. Um, we've got people enjoying it, the higher, yeah everything's changed, even these path heights have changed, this is gone, 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 these trees will be gone. This old people's home now I believe. 
What the hell's that up there? Couldn't tell you. What's that? Is it trees or a building? I don't know. But again, it's hat central. A couple of them forgot their hats. He's going to die early. Dead. All dead. Actually, yeah, all dead. Dead. Search their names. They're all dead. Um, the fishing area from the nice side uh, that you saw with that pagoda ish hexagon building, octagon building. Uh, fishing bit, all the wood again. I think you can see remains of all this. Um, if you go there now, like sticky up pieces of rock, because I think these are stone. I could even hazard a guess that the thing's silted up to this level and you can only see these now, and all this is underneath still. Can't be too sure, but I imagine all the wood itself is long gone now. Long gone. Here's the bridge. Again, oh, we had a fence, so we're starting to block off people's entrance here. So is it that house's fault? This looks like the start of the end already. So no one's sitting here fishing anymore. The fence here stopping you getting in. The cameraman or the painter has jumped the fence and he's got his easel. It's a nightmare, but it was worth it just to get this drawer in. Maybe the swimming pool's still there though. Maybe you can access this and it's just a quiet day. I don't know. Uh, if you're local, you'll know Deutsch Road is an absolute nightmare to drive or park down. Look at it before cars and tarmac. It's beautiful. Completely different area now. I'm sure you know if you are local. 1912. 1911 is Kings Road. Yeah, so I believe Kings Road looking down towards the park. I believe you can see the park from that angle. Because that doesn't look like Slade Road at all. But that looks like maybe where the new Brookvale builds are now on the other side of the lake up the hill heading over towards Salford Bridge. Again, really nice and ornate. Not looking too gaslighty. Maybe the term gaslighting is a fucking term we should keep an eye on anyway because like to be gaslighted is to almost be lied to and told the truth at the same time given a new truth I believe and if gaslights were never a thing and it was always electricity have we been gaslighted in the truest form um, again if this is your first video you're watching of mine I chat a lot of waffle and I fell down a lot of holes I'll do more videos so you can catch up hopefully you know what I'm talking about but I don't trust the past right now I think they've took everything from us and it's a shame here Litchfield Road so Spaghetti's just here now. This is Power League. There's another reservoir there. So this is the old Aston Park, I believe they call it, or Lower Grounds Park. Um, all football grounds now. And yeah, the tram line's gone. We don't have trams anymore. They all went in the 50s. Uh, we're having them back now. They're building the trams now in 2020. But we had trams. Uh, none of this around. But all the roads here, it's still a dual carriageway and a mad junction. Not too much change, but obviously a lot more traffic and bus lanes and all that trash. I think ironically enough, the bus lanes are over here now taking up road, whereas the old tram lanes are the current centre bit of grass, which would be perfect to use for trams, because you don't get in the way. Birmingham Council. I'm going to send this to Birmingham Council and just ask what the hell were we thinking this whole time. It's ten steps back, isn't it, every time. Uh, back in here, so I think, yeah, we've been there, so there's all the fishing area, the nice octagon building, the old shop, all the... These, okay, a little bit more recent because these have been boarded up even further, so this is when they probably attempted to let them be toilets again, um, and then they were all smashed up, ruined. But these look like they're built to take a hit, they're very fancy, and why, why the columns? Why all this? Why that? Not sure. Maybe why two of them? There's like that whole parallel thing going on. It's a bit weird. Um, but all this boarded up now completely. It's just boarded up with red and white paint. You can't see them. You can't get in. So that's a bit of history we'll never get our head around. And annoyingly, he did have all of this lovely stuff back in the day. Lovely, lovely. But then by the 60s, people are complaining. Because you could, you could take your boat on the lake then. You could hire a boat. And all the kids, you could hire a boat, have a lovely time. But then this guy remembers, um, we go out as far as we could just so we could get our money's worth and we had to sail back when the guy called us back in. And sometimes people just discarded the boats at the side of the lake and just walked off and didn't pay for one reason or another. So really, are we surprised that all this stuff has been taken off us because people even then couldn't just book their ideas up and use it properly? Hmm? 
I mean, we'll blame like the chavs now and the underprivileged kids now, and we need to give them places to play football and have a social club somewhere or whatever the kids do now. Put a PlayStation in there. But straight up, the people who give us these options couldn't behave the damn selves back in the day either. So let's. We didn't lose it. It was lost for us and it was all taken away from us before, I guess, us 90s and 80s kids even had a head in. All gone. Talk to anyone in like the generation above, they don't really know what happened um, that whole time. I think it was just a such a bizarre time that people just didn't use the park and uh, no one remembers this going for some reason and now you look at the state of it now and think at what point did the people in the local area accept that and just went okay we don't need it anymore because I don't understand how can you have something this beautiful look at the boat all the swanage all this nice iron fencing and now it's all horrible prison fencing padlocked you can't get to this you can't get to this area at all you can't get to this that's gone and at some point in history, everyone was okay with that. And uh, well, I didn't get a say. And it sounds like a lot of people, my senior didn't get a say. So I'm just not sure what happened. Here's the down. So all this is quite nicely grown now. It's not mud side like this. But um, there's the new builds being built. I believe where I live was finished in the 80s. So these are a bit earlier on. This is the late 1970s. On the other side of the lake now with all this going on all these trees really big now which is nice and they're still there all this grass still there this still there can't fish there but it is there um oh there it is now boarded up completely with no windows no doors no nothing there you go and children's pool oh so the house is there in this one you can get all here wooden bridges yeah we had it all it's just so much nicer then. I just don't understand where it went. So here's, um, if we want to talk about things being repurposed, uh, I believe this is a one case of it. So maybe this was something really special for the people and uh, we'll never understand what it was actually for. Your granddad's dead now, so you, you won't ask him. But there's stairs up there, you can chill in there. There's something special going on. The design's nice. I don't know why it was done, but it was turned into a boathouse, I believe. Or oh, that's a crazily close design you've got the octagon bit side windows yeah, well, I'm pointing at the screen octagon side windows square building octagon side windows square building all of this a lot worse off than it used to be they've got rid of the fishing already there's the sons of rest club that burnt down in 2013 uh, at least you could boat then you can't get down here anymore all closed looks like they've thrown spaghetti up at this point, is that spaghetti in the background or a load of housing? I don't think you can see spaghetti from here. Or maybe you could before the houses. Who knows? 1970, so spaghetti would be there. Yeah, so that's where the 70s or maybe the 50s took us as far as changing things around and changing the purpose. And they've put a cross on there now. A bit weird. Right, and that's where it took me back. Like, why were these things thrown up? Possibly in a, a throwback of the. Uh, the Victorian kind of influence that they got from their Indian part of the of the empire, and they had these chhatris, little towers that would they would build over the cremation spot of important people in their culture. So important, and also you always need this spire, and I'm still not sure why. What are they for? I know you can use them as like lightning rods, and you ground it, but none of these seem like grounding's a new thing what kind of gets adapted now people start grounding churches now i just don't think they were doing it then i think there's either steel in the structure which sorted out the grounding problem anyway with no problem and they could harness that power maybe but you know it's just something to bend your head around and like this is 1900 so don't lose your mind if you if you really want to put your head out there have a look at this that looks like it's this is utah on the great salt lake in America this is 1900 and we're capable of this massive essential version of uh, Brookvale Park as a pier with all the the trinkets and the minaretage that you could wish for and I'm just like why was they doing this for people and it, was, it looks like they pushed us into the water or we were trying to get back to the water or something at the time it seemed important and then Brighton Pier burns down and uh, you just leave it we don't need it is your local swimming bath closed down mine has 
Uh, Mount Vernon bandstand is a great example of the square bandstand. Yes, I couldn't discover anything about its history. Oh yeah, putting bells in these stands is another why. There's going to be a reason, and I reckon it's quite cleansing. Or are they or they're important enough to be put in the middle of the road sometimes? They still need that. I'm not sure. Well, there you go, nice old photo. So this is going to be at least 1950, 1965. Definitely not 1970 because that would be repurposed into that fishing house by now. So uh, yeah, kids, the local kids, all looking nice, happy, and healthy. Um, if you're still alive and you're looking at this photo now, get in touch, man. Tell me about this place. And why did it change? And I know there's not been a lot of Witten Lakes history in this video, but it had its own history. There's a currently a, a built down bit where you can sit and it's really bizarre, but yeah, it's explained because this was it was a fishing house back in the day, but I'll get I'll do a completely separate video on Witten Lakes and the stuff that was there. And I'll do separate videos on every rabbit hole I almost fell down consider uh, concerning the trees and electricity and canals or whatever else. Um just a bit more destruction of the area just so you can get your head around the heights of it. Uh, here's Spaghetti Junction being built where Salford Bridge is. I don't know where it is in this photo. But I think this is the Tyburn side. You can see how high this is. There's a little cliff edge here. And there, apparently there were um, sandstone houses here. And you can see, I mean, the old waterway running under there still. Blows my mind at how they built this. I have no bloody idea all these really low down houses so completely changed the land all these really low down really high but yeah as i say brookvale is this high you're as high as the gantry there you go 1969 apparently built on terrible piling and it's going to fall down at some point it's completely not made for purpose so good luck it's still there now though it's done a good job but they are building and repairing it constantly um I've heard that it's a honeycomb kind of structure in the middle of these old concrete posts and like ever since then they've just been like slamming more on the outside and cladding it and cladding it whereas they were never really fit for purpose in the first place so we'll wait for that to go it'll be a bad day but you can see a bit of the old park here the nice bit is still left spaghetti junction and there's a drawing of that building photo we just saw in utah in 1901 so anything was possible in the 1901s and around that time, very water based, weren't we? It seems like that park opened to the public in 1908, that one. Um, so, very important water. Out there, Southwood Bridge before Spaghetti Junction. Which is nice, isn't it? Lots of trees. Again, I guess like the, the fact that these photos aren't coloured do make it a bit more romanticised, but this is the bit that is under Spaghetti when you park up at the lights at Southwood Circus. There's the bridge on the right, which has like the local dickheads his name's written on them for some reason um, go and have a look it's ruined that's the end of my little show on Brookvale Park Witten Lakes and uh, the general history of the area and destruction of the beautiful things that we were given um, before our time and that's what we've been left with we are in the middle of a bloody just a destruction zone I think we've just been left with the remnants of something that was once beautiful and it's not our fault, but we make the best. I mean, uh, obviously it's 2020 now, you're going through the same thing as us. Uh, it's the lockdown, it's been a year of doing absolutely nothing, having all the time in the world to just do some research on what's around you and what, I don't know, depending on your stance on the coronavirus itself and all that stuff, um, do you believe what you're told by your TV or are you just gonna go and look yourself and try and find out because a lot of it doesn't add up what I was told. Um, and as you see, half the reasonings of half these things being built, we don't get told and there's no history, there's barely any photos. So um, it's not a case of go out and make up your own history, but try and make up your own mind about whether you think the account you've been given so far is correct or not. Because I think uh, there's just more to everything that we see or don't see and imagine the things we don't see. Uh, join me in my next video thank you very much for getting through this uh, I hope you've enjoyed the throwback through the old photos uh, get in touch if you do want a copy of the PowerPoint and I'll just send it to you and you can have all those photos for yourself and have a little look through um, thank you very much and I'll hopefully do some more local history videos uh, thank you all